Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxter and this is Walk Time Blog number 26, The Big Red Button. It's been ages since I've done a Walk Time Blog and that's because I haven't been walking. Um, and part of that is because we've just started uh, using Scrum um, as a development methodology at IVT. And um, so Paul Shimkoviak has been coming along, I've been picking him up from the station and hence not walking. Now that is also part of the reason for this story. A couple of years ago when I was contracting for Beyond Productions doing uh, props for uh, a TV show, I had a great time building really weird stuff, all Arduino based and um, it was cool. You know, it was actually fun building things that didn't really have any real purpose, they just were meant to look like stuff. And that ties into something to do with Scrum and, um, and even things like you know, continuous delivery and all those sorts of associated concepts. One of the things that is spoken about from time to time is the idea of putting the power of managing releases into the hands of the business um, people, so you know the product owner. And so, um, what I am wanting to do is literally put a big red button in the hands of our product manager. And that way, he can physically press the button, and that authorizes the release, and the software goes out onto the production servers. So I've grabbed a few bits and pieces and I'll show you what I've got so far. So I've got a big plastic box with some rubber feet and this is the important bit. It's a big panic button, a locking button. So you push it down, it locks on, you've got to twist it to release. So I'm going to mount that in the box. And I have a few other bits and pieces. There's an 11, which is an Arduino compatible board. There's a Wii Shield, which gives it Wi-Fi access uh, for network connectivity. Now I did actually think about using maybe an Ether 10, which is like an Arduino with built-in Ethernet, but then you've got to plug it in. So what I was, the way I envisage this ending up is a box with a button on it and a key switch. So basically you turn the key switch to arm it, and then when you hit the button it calls out to a URL, which can be part of the build system. And so the build system then kicks into gear and releases the software. And so I've also got some LEDs and um, some little things here, some standoffs and stuff. There's a prototyping shield. Um, there's a little piezo module. I don't know if I'll get to use them, but there's some LED bar graphs. And um, I'm going to see how it turns out. So I'll just start building it and we'll see what happens. Should be fun. I've drilled holes in the base now and in the end so that I can mount the 11 in here. And there's some plastic standoffs. There will be four in there, but for now I've just got three to check the position. I've got a hole there for the USB connection and there's a hole for power. So next I need to mark up the position of the big red button itself. I'm going to put it sort of just to the right of the 11 and then I've got to drill a hole in the case. And then similarly I'm going to put the key switch on the left somewhere, probably about here. So I will measure those up. I think I'll put them on the center line that way and then just space so that they clear the 11 nicely. Time to drill some holes. The big red button is now mostly hardware complete. I still need to actually screw it into the base properly, it's just sitting there, and I still need a uh, power source internally, a battery at the moment, it's running off USB, but it's getting there. Um, I've made a little change. My original concept was that the key switch would turn it on, so that would basically be a power switch to arm it. What I've decided to do instead is have another power switch somewhere else. I haven't done that yet. And instead use the key switch to select the mode. It's basically like a thumbs up, thumbs down on the software package. And um, I have a little sketch running in there at the moment that doesn't do very much, just a proof of concept. But if I use the key switch, now I can select which LED flashes. So you can select, yes, this is good, release it, or no, that's bad, reject it. And it's also wired to the big red button. So if the button is up, it flashes at one hertz push it down and it starts flashing much faster. So um, I've got interaction working with the two buttons and oh, with the button and the selector and the LEDs. So now all I need to do is add an internal battery pack and I can also then load a sketch to use the Wii Shield to call out to your URL when the button is pressed. And of course now that we've got a selector um, we'll call out to two different URLs or pass different variables as arguments to the URL depending on the status of the selector. And now the big red button is done. At least version 1. 
I've added a little piezo module in there so I can make tones but I haven't got that running in the software just yet and um, at the moment it's just showing constant instead of flashing LEDs but it's actually functional so if I come up here onto the screen do a tail on the syslog on the, sorry on the Apache log we can see what URL is being called and it's running off battery at the moment nothing plugged into it it's all self-contained the little selector switch is across into the red position which is the reject position so if I move it up here and I press the button you'll see the Apache log will acknowledge and we've just called a PHP script so now we'll deactivate the button and I'll put it across to the approved mode once again if I hit the big red button it's called the approved URL so we now have a hardware device that we can use to either reject or approve the software releases so now I just need to do a bit of coding on the PHP side to hook that into the build system and then we're done so this should be a bit of fun at the um, the scrum demo tomorrow And now, amazingly, five and a half months has passed since I filmed the last bit of this video. A whole lot of stuff has happened in the meantime. Um, IVT is now well and truly into doing um, Scrum development, so we've done quite a few sprints so far. I've done lots of different projects. I spent a while in hospital, and my work arrangements have changed, all sorts of things. So it's been a bit of a hiatus, but I'm back, and hopefully I'll do a few more follow-ups for now. So this is actually a bit of a blast from the past now. It was all brand new when I was filming the start of it, but this is now kind of old. This is the web interface that I created um, five or so months ago, five and a half months ago for this system. And the idea is that this display is shown in the office um, towards the end of the sprint. So all of the staff at the company know which projects or which um, stories are being worked on and what's likely to be in the next release. And it can also be put up on a big screen at the demo so when we're looking at the end of each sprint at what's been worked on um, it can be used to display what is currently pending now this is hooked up to the big red button as you can see it's running wirelessly um, just like I've shown it to you before it's got the key switch to select the mode whether you want to approve the story or reject it and it is linked through to the system that is currently driving this display so the way it works is that it shows the JIRA ID for the particular story. It shows the title or the name of the story and the status. In this case, um, you can, this is the list of items from our second sprint, which was many months ago now. And you, I've set everything back to pending status, just so you can see the sequence of what happens. So every story starts pending at the beginning of the demo and there is a candidate. So in this case, the first one, which is highlighted in yellow, is event registration form fields was a candidate and then at the demo the product manager can use this to pass judgment and um, so I'll set it to approved and press the button and you'll see in a moment that this will update it's now marked as approved on that story and it's moved on to the next story so that that one can be judged so then the demo goes along we see whether that one works or not if the product manager is happy um, it's approved otherwise reject I'll demonstrate a reject action and that one's been rejected and you can see the totals down the bottom here update as well so by the end of the demo we can have worked through a series of stories and set all of their statuses so whether they're approved or not and those particular changes can then be merged into the release candidate and go out onto the production servers so that's an example of using the big red button to pass judgment on stories in a sprint. So hopefully I'll get back to more of these walk time blogs now and um, there'll be many more to follow. See ya.